reading from Srimad Bhagavatam from the third chapter of the second canto entitled Pure Devotional Service The Change in Heart, text number one. Shri Sukhuvacha Ivan Netam Nigaditam Vistavan Yadban Maha Nenam Yabri Yamanam Manishishu Manishina Shri Sukhuvacha Ivan Netam Nigaditam Vistavan Yadban Maha themselves with the gross and subtle material bodies, which they are not, in fact. They may be situated in different high and low positions in the estimation of human society, but one should know definitely that unless one inquires about his own self beyond the body and the mind, all his activities in human life are total failures. Therefore, out of thousands and thousands of men, one may inquire uh, about his spirit self and thus consult the revealed scriptures like Vedanta Sutras, Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. But in spite of reading and hearing such scriptures, unless one is in touch with a realized spiritual master, he can not actually realize the real nature of self, etc. And out of thousands and hundreds of thousands of men, some may know what Lord Krishna is, in fact, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya, Madhya, Madhya 20, 122 and 123, it is said that Lord Krishna, out of his costless mercy, prepared the Vedic literature in the incarnation of Vyasadeva for reading by the intelligent class of men in a human society, which is almost totally forgetful of the genuine relationship, the genuine relation with Krishna. Even such an intelligent class of men may be forgetful in their relation with the Lord. The whole bhakti yoga process is therefore a revival of the lost relation. This revival is possible in the human form of life, which is obtained only out of the elu- elu- <coughs> sorry, evolutionary cycle of 8,400,000 <coughs> species of life. The intelligent class of human being must take a serious note of this opportunity. Not all human beings are intelligent, so the importance of human life is not always understood. 
Therefore, manisina, meaning thoughtful, is particularly used here. A manisina person, like Maharaj Pariksit, must ever take to the lotus feet of Lord Krishna and fully engage himself in devotional service, hearing, chanting, etc., of the holy name and pastimes of the Lord, which are all Harikata Amrita. This action is especially recommended when one is preparing for death. Om Ajnana Timananda Syakinanda Salakya Chakshurvin Vitam Yana Tasmai Sri Guru Vedama Chite Kana Hodisam Sabitam Yena Bhutale Chayam Rupa Kalamya Dadati Swapadantika Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Vichana Chite Vita Gadala Shri Vasadi Govindra Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Marit Marit Pariksit who had been cursed to die within seven days inquired um, from Sukadev Goswami, what was the, uh, the duty of a man who is about to die? And Srila Sukadev Goswami is pointing out that there are different paths. There is the Pravriti Mark and the Nivriti Mark, or the path of improvement within this material world, and there is the Nivriti Mark, the path of ending material existence. So, practically all living beings are preoccupied with trying to improve the conditions of life in the material world, somehow or other, working very hard for economic development, working very hard for sense gratification, and accepting some restrictions for the sake of of getting better results. Some principles of Dharma, some principles of sacrifice, some principle of restriction uh, to get a better quality of material life. That is all. So, these are known as the Chatur Vargas. The Chatur Vargas, Dharma, Artakama, and Moksha. Dharma, Artakama, and Moksha are basically the preoccupation of society at large. But since, since dharma is not the same as pure devotional service, yes, since dharma is, is better than animal life, there is no doubt about it. When one accepts some regulation of scripture, that is very good. That is good, because one can rise above animal life. But it's not good enough. Um, just like it is said, uh, one may have a position in the, within Varnashram. Um, but what is the benefit of the position in Varnashram? Some may be very proud of being Brahmanas, or even Kshatriya exalted positions in society. But all such exalted positions are not considered very important when they are not when they are not connected for the pleasure of Hari. That is the only real criterion. What is, what is happening for the pleasure of the Lord? Because that is the only thing that will give, to give lasting benefit. What is, what is the good of temporary benefit? <coughs> what is the good of getting so much temporary benefit and then it has created so much attention? Because whatever material enjoyment we gain, not only are we, are we getting temporary enjoyment, say, so, all right, well, I'll take it, even if it's temporary. For some time, we get some enjoyment. What is wrong with that? I have some desires. Let me have some temporary enjoyment. Why not? Huh? Yes, one reason why not is because 
It is not the nature of the soul to have temporary relationships. The nature of the soul is to have eternal relationships. And therefore, the soul, we cannot accept by nature that anything is temporary. And we want it to endure, we want it to continue. We, it is very hard for us to accept the temporary nature of anything. And therefore, the result is, is that we desire any relationship in this world to continue but it does not. And then, when it ceases to exist, we still remain there with, with attachment and desire. With the desire for that same thing to continue that is now gone. That is now gone. That is the material. I remember that we were, that in the 80s, I was here in Australia uh, on, a, on a very large farm, which we used to have in those days. Uh, 10,000 hectares, and there was, and there were many payments, payments of loans, uh, of loans for different things, and one payment of a loan was there for a very big tractor that we didn't have anymore. The tractor was long gone, but we still were paying for the tractor that we didn't have, and that's an example of, of material attachment. You're still paying for something you don't have. It's already gone. It's still paying, still, still paying, still because of attachment, still trying. Uh, we've lost our youth long ago, still trying, still trying, somehow or other to be young. Uh, you see these kind of clips sometimes. <coughs> I saw a clip of, of a man in office and his new secretary had, uh, had come into the office. So. One of the chief executives was constantly holding his breath, trying not to show his protruding belly right, all the time. And then one day he came to office with a, and he had his corset on, a whole big thing, almost up to the neck and very tight. And at one point he fell over. <laughs> he couldn't get up anymore because the thing kept him straight. Right, so he <laughs> <laughs> he had to be lifted off the floor. Trying to, to still hold on, hold on to something, which is gone, it's gone. Um, trying to hold on to the pleasures which are really within the domain of youth, and then they're gone. Um, so, uh, what is the point? Um, so an intelligent person can understand, can see, can see through it, can see beyond the moment. Uh, it, it's referred to as Shreyas and Brahmas, the long-term vision and the short-term vision. The unintelligent person becomes bewildered by the immediate circumstances. Oh, look what's in front of me now. Oh, what an opportunity. Wonderful. A more intelligent person may say, yes, this is a wonderful opportunity, undoubtedly. But the results that I get from it, what will they, for how long will they last? And what is, uh, what is the benefit? And how much attachment and entanglement will come from it all? Uh, therefore, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Either that's chinna sa yam te nam if one wants to make this human form of life successful, one has to work for a for the long-term benefit, not for some immediate immediate benefit, which is temporary, some temporary fruits. So this is intelligent. It's not so easy. And really, the only long-term benefit is devotional service. In the uh, teachings to Sanatana Goswami, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, this very same topic is also being discussed. The tapatraya, the threefold miseries, uh, the temporary benefits of uh, material enjoyment, and then at one point um, the statement is made that ev everything basically has no meaning at all unless 
it is devotional service to Krishna. Um, we find such verses in the Chaitanya Charitamrita saying, for example, um, anything religious or irreligious, if it's not devotional service, it's sinful. Krishna does That's kind of strong. Uh, so Dharma is is rejected here uh, by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami in a strong way. He says sinful. He doesn't even say it's good. He says it's sinful. Why? Because one will remain caught up in a network of trying to enjoy the material energy. And then, yes, one gets involved with karma. Uh, we know that in the Vedic culture, there are these five sacrifices that are to be performed. Uh, uh, five sacrifices uh, because one gets uh, to counteract, to counteract in uh, unavoidable impious activities. It is said when you grind the spices, of course, in the Vedic literature by hand, uh, with the pestle, Grinding the spices. When one grinds the spices, one kills so many living entities. With every step of the road, we kill so many living entities. Therefore, even when one doesn't consciously desire, even when one tries to avoid committing sinful activities, one gets involved in it. One gets involved in it. We take so many things from so many people. For our use, we need, uh, we need, every day, we use so many things. We use water, we use, we use air, we use food, uh, we use many things. But many of these things may not be uh, what we think it is. Uh, like, uh, my father, he was uh, some businessman involved in, in textiles and uh, yeah, he, he had some prominent position, whatever it was. So, uh, at one point, there was a textile factory, and when I was a kid, they took me to the textile factory, and they gave me the royal tour. You know, it's the son of one of the buses, so I taken around, walking around, trying to look uh, important. And, uh, but I came to the place where all the wool was coming in, and there were like truckloads of wool coming in. And it was raw. And it was full of blood. That's the one thing that shocked me the most of the whole tour. I saw the wool, I saw so many things. I saw the machines making, uh, making carpets and making all kinds of things. But uh, there's so much blood on that wool. I never realized that when I put on my sweater. Uh, I never thought of, of it. Huh? Nice sweater. Mm -hmm. Punjab. Huh? <laughs> Alan Mohan gives me sweaters every year. <laughs> but, uh, Alan Mohan, best quality Punjab wala. Huh? <laughs> Very warm, undoubtedly. Uh, but, yes, to the raw bull, there is so much blood. So, if we see, uh, in modern society, maybe not in a traditional way where the sheep was very carefully shaved, possibly. But who cares about these things nowadays? We are just quick and, and fast. So here we are, Australia, number one wool exporter. Uh, here we go. There is blood. There is blood also attached to that. So many activities are involved with sin. Even unknowingly, unknowingly, you don't know. Uh, you buy something, you don't know. You don't know what what sinful activities are, are attached to it. No idea. Uh, maybe the chatter that we wear is not the one I wear. Maybe the chatter that you, because mine is not so it's much tougher. <laughs> but maybe, maybe the chatter that you wear has been, uh, you know, is all mixed with cheating. Right? Maybe they took the materials without paying for it. Yeah. And then made it into chuggers. 
And in this way, the whole thing is just is some heavy karma attached to it. When you throw all that sinful karma over your shoulder. Yeah? Every day, nice and warm, isn't it? <laughs> so, in this way, if you so many things, you don't know what karma is attached to it. Therefore, the way they could culture and the way yagyas to be performed to counteract that in case to everything, everything, the house that has been built with every brick. Um, in, in India nowadays, you see so many children, innocent children, exploited in factories, working in factories. Um, and it's like uh, horrific. Just uh, child labor, there's whole articles about in the paper. We all say, shame, shame, shame. And then we go on buying it. Uh, we drive around with the, with the petrol in the tank. We say, this pollution in the world is just too much, it's too much. Uh, and meanwhile, we start a car and drive around. It's for us that this pollution is going on. We're sponsoring it every day. Uh, we're sponsoring. So many of the sinful activities of the world, the things they are doing, we're sponsoring it. We're sponsoring it. Little beauty cream, you know, from who knows what animals have been killed for it. Um, we're sponsoring it. So, okay, you get the idea, I guess. <laughs> I will not uh, give a whole lecture just carrying on like this. This is just to make the point why uh, People invading culture were engaging in all kinds of sacrifices to counteract possible unknown sinful reactions. Nowadays we don't do. Vedic uh, scriptures are acknowledging that we are indebted, uh, that we have many debts for all that is given to us. We are getting sunlight, we are indebted to Surya, we are getting light. Uh, air, uh, indebted to Vayu, so we're indebted to the demigods, they supply to us, we're indebted to our parents, they sacrificed for us for so many lives, so, 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 so many years, um, indebted to our teachers, they, they studied for many years, not easy, hard work, they studied, got all that learning and brought it to us. Indebted, indebted to you know, to the plants that died for our sati, <laughs> indebted for the to the cows for all the milk they gave, uh, and so on. Indebted, indebted, indebted in all directions. So, uh, therefore, in the Vedic scriptures, it's pointed out that one must repay these debts by. Uh, making offerings to the uh, to the demigods, one must somehow or other uh, repay all his debts. So Vedic culture is a very intricate society. Don't forget, you have to do some worship here, some worship there. Uh, the first time I came to India, the one thing that struck me, I was in the city of Banaras, which is sort of a city dedicated to religion, and everywhere. Everywhere there's, there's, there's a deity. Every, every other house is a little, has a little temple or a big temple and they're doing something, ringing bells, putting powder, leaves, flowers, and everywhere constantly. It's like so many gods and you're looking around like, well, who is God? I mean, why so many? Right? Why so many? Can't you just have one simple, you know, like here he is, God, what a nice dog. No, this one, that one, and don't forget, don't forget, you have to offer this puja today. Ah, oh my God, almost forgot. Yes, 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 very important. All kinds of pujas have to be performed. Um, in Bengal, where I lived for many years, uh, you see so many pujas, Durga puja, Kali puja, this Vishwakarma puja. On the day of Vishwakarma puja, you worship your tools. <coughs> So you see people worshipping their bicycle. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Even the brahmacharis, the local Bengali brahmacharis, and no one's watching. <laughs> Great feature for the bicycle. Some blessing, they need, no, really, 
Otherwise, what may happen to your bicycle? Uh, if you don't do it, you may get angry. <laughs> story which I'll share with you. Um, it is the story about a marriage party and a mother made an arrangement for her daughter and the marriage was all uh, very, very elaborate and everything was ready. Then, you know, believe it or not, just at the last moment, this black cat walks right into the middle of the whole thing. Oh my God, black <laughs> cat, what are we going to do? Oh no. Anyway, there was an empty basket from the flowers and the mother just quickly put the basket over the black cat. And then, you know, it was too late to do anything else. The ceremony went on, the priest was already there, chanting all the mantras, and everything happened. And everything went fine. Oh, thank God. Thirty years later, the daughter, who now was organizing the marriage of her daughter, of her own daughter. Yes. She was also making all the arrangements and everything was ready and then at the last minute an inspection with the checklist, do we have everything? And then she said, oh my God, oh my God, we forgot something, something very important. What is it, what is it? A black cat. <laughs> we need a black cat. There has to be a black cat under a basket. It's very important, must be there. <laughs> yes. Anyway, they found a black cat somehow and put it under the basket. And since it is since that time that in every marriage there is a black cat under the basket. <laughs> now you know why there is this black cat. Right. So like that, so much ritual going on just to counteract inauspiciousness. But this is actually a primitive form of worship. The the tribal people in the jungles, they do the same, they do the same. Um, they make sacrifices. We see sacrifices to Kali, to Kali and we're offering Kali blood. So much blood is offered to Kali. Why? Well, the, the logic is that better the blood of an animal than my blood, you see. <laughs> you know, therefore, if whoever is out there, uh, if whoever is up there wants blood, no, we'll give you blood, we'll give it. Uh, it's nice gold, you take, take that, um, so that you don't take my child, or that you don't take me, so that everything may be pacified and nice. Um, so in this way, we see demigod worship out of fear on the lowest level, the shakhtas. Um, one level up, is where we begin to uh, turn to them, appreciating for the positive energy into our life. Then you get sun worship. I never understood it. Why would you worship the sun? Of course, I like the sun. It's not that I don't like the sun, but to start worshiping the sun, like the Incas, the Egyptians, and so many people around the world are worshiping the sun. Why worship the sun? The idea is that one worships the positive, life-giving energy of the Lord. Oh. So, actually, uh, we see it comes back in a modern form now, in the form of uh, Reiki, Prana healing. It's the same thing, catching the energies, the positive energies of the Lord. So that's all within the category of Suryas, the Surya worship. Catch a little cheap. <laughs> All that is, is part of Surya worship. So that is, but it is considered. Can someone fix this? Because my back is slowly falling. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, so we had the Shaktas, the Suryas, and then the next level is where we begin to uh, worship a deity for giving us specific benefits, a kamapancha, the 
worshipping Ganapati. He will give us, oh yes, the things we need in life. Oh, he's Ganapati, very sweet. But we worship, he takes away obstacles, we worship him. Oh yes, why not? Just a little deity on, on the altar. Oh. Yes, why not? Little bit of some of my faith with Krishna, little faith with Ganapati. Oh. For some things I don't bother Krishna. I just bother Ganapati. <laughs> Can you, I can't really ask Krishna to fix all these things, right, these material things. It's not really appropriate to approach Krishna for solving your material problems because he's not an order supplier. We, after all, are meant to be the purely dedicated servant of Krishna. So a little Ganapati for my material problems. <laughs> just above the door. <laughs> yes, just, uh, no, no, we, want him. we don't do puja, no, not puja, we don't. We just put him above the door. Yes, yes, yes. And Hanuman is also nice. Yesterday we or the other day we spoke about Hanuman Chalisa. You can chant on every window of the house. <laughs> and no inauspiciousness to enter. Yeah, in this way Hanuman is very useful. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Very useful. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, yes. Thinking about Hanuman. Oh, yes, 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 yes. If you lose something, you know, uh, if you lose something, they say, you chant the name of Hanuman, it's even a mantra, and you'll find it. Very useful he is. <laughs> you can use him like this. How can we use Hanuman? How okay. can that is not a devotee spirit. No. We are the servant. We cannot use anyone. No. We don't. No. So this Ganapatya type of worship is that fruitive mentality that kicks in the worship, where we hope to get some benefits for it and to fix our material problems. That's why we see that Ganapati in particular is the deity of the Vaishya. Profit, profit, profit. Yeah. Very nice. Yes, so, and, uh, but it is said that it's still a higher level. Huh? And the higher level is, is actually when we come to worship uh, Brahman, uh, when we begin to understand that everything is, is one. Is that everything is resting on a on, on spiritual energy? Um, so this is is certainly a higher level. So generally speaking, we find that the Shaivites are impersonal, impersonalists. And why is that so? Um, well, we remember the description that the um, of the linga um, in the Brahma Samhita. There is an explanation how Shambhu is the generative principle. Um, that is interesting because Shambhu, Shiva, we thought he was the destroyer, wasn't it? Wasn't Shiva the destroyer? Brahma, creator, Vishnu, maintainer, Shiva, destroyer. So why is the Brahma Samhita describing him as the generating principle? It, the reason is, is because on the separation of the material and the spiritual world is the causal ocean, also known as the Viraja, the Viraja river, the river that separates the material and the spiritual world, or, or Haridam and Devidam. Then, on the spiritual side of that causal ocean is the resting place of Lord Mahavishnu. Um, and it is said that sometimes the material uh, world exists during the life of Brahma and during, uh, and then at the end of the life of Brahma, all the, the material ingredients enter into the body of Brahma, uh, of, of uh, Mahavishnu, and uh, the material world is not manifest. At that stage, the material world is manifest in potential. It is in potential, it's still there. 
The material energy in potential, which is not there, but in potential is there, is known as pradhana. It is said then, when it is time for the material energy to again become manifest and active, it is Mahavishnu who cleanses upon that potential, upon the pradhana, and then the material energy becomes, the three modes of material nature become an active. And the whole Maha Tattva, all the material ingredients are there. And it is said, Saiksata, the Lord Mahavishnu, he activates this Pradhana by his glands. And the glands is Shambhu. Um, that is what the Brahma Samhita is describing. That Sadashiva, the expansion of Mahavishnu, who is Vishnu Tattva, by the way is becoming that same glance. When Sada Shiva is, is then coming in touch with Pradhana and activates the material energy, energy, he impregnates the material energy with living beings. And it said what happens at that moment, Yata, that he vikara visesa yoga, then a transformation takes place, which is compared to how Milk transforms into yogurt, and then Sada Shiva becomes the demigod Shiva, who is described as such in Bhagavatam, deciding uh, residing on Mount Kailash with his devotee Kuvira looking after him. And in the Vriya Bhagavatam, Rita Sanatana Goswami explains that on the spiritual side of the Viraja, of the Viraja River, is another abode of Shiva, which is the which is Shiva Loka. So, two sides of the Viraja River, or two sides of the causal ocean. The material side, Mount Kailash, the demigod Shiva, and who is not Vishnu Tattva, who has become a Tattva of his own. And on the spiritual side, another residence of Shiva, where Sala Shiva, who is an expansion of Lord Vishnu, who is Vishnu Tattva, is residing. So it is explained. Uh, in, in scripture. So that is interesting. Therefore, we see that uh, the impersonalists are worshipping Lord Shiva in the form of the Linga, uh, in Kasi, in Varanasi. Uh, we see that the presiding deity of the city is, is Lord Shiva, and Linga is being worshipped, and it's also the headquarters of, of the Mayavadis. Uh, so, uh, there is a, a connection there because we see the idea is that all this material energy is, is, is manifest for a while and then again it's not manifest. Is it, doesn't that sound beautiful and impersonal to you? Ah, pleasing to the heart of the, of the hard-hearted person. Of those, who is, of those who are fearful. It is said the Mayavadis are basically fearful. They are, they are fearful. They are motivated by fear. Because they don't want. They don't want any form anymore. Because they have suffered too much in the material energy. They've suffered from all the varieties of this world. I don't want it anymore. No more variety. Forget it. First, you were trying to injure, 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 injure. Didn't work, didn't work, didn't work. <laughs> and then, what to do, what to do, what to do. Got it. It's all false. Wow. Great. It doesn't really exist. There is no suffering because it's all illusion, says the Mayavad philosophy. And in this way, one tries to rise above material suffering. So it is fed by negative motivation, see? By fear of suffering. There's no positive. Therefore, this impersonalism is, is fed by fear. Whereas bhakti, which is the topmost level, um, the ultimate, the worship of Vishnu and Krishna, is nourished by love. So that 
that's another thing. It's nourished by a positive experience. Here is Krishna, unlimitedly beautiful, stunning. If you see him, you can't breathe. If you see him, you, you stop in your tracks. You cannot believe. Here is Krishna, not only externally beautiful, like Bhutana, who is externally beautiful, internally a witch. Uh, no, Krishna, his beauty is also in his character. Krishna is his most noble and kind uh, and goes out of his way for the benefit of his, his devotee. He'll do anything for his devotee. Uh, that is Krishna. So in this way, Krishna is conquering our heart. Uh, Krishna, it, with his, uh, his beauty, with his amazing pastimes, Krishna, uh, who is always, always satisfying all desires of his devotees, things of Dhruva. Uh, so you think of Dhruva, he desired a kingdom greater than his father and grandfather. And but whatever he got was much more than he could have imagined. That's the nature of Krishna. So, it is worship of Krishna that is really, uh, that, is, that is, can fully satisfy. What else can satisfy? Okay, I did puja to my bicycle on Vishwakarma Puja Day, and my bicycle didn't break for a whole year. No, no, no. <laughs> very good. Uh, yes. I had no repairs on my bicycle this year. No, not Because <laughs> uh, no. I did the Vishwakarma Puja. Oh, good for you. Wow. You must be really happy that you have no repairs on your bicycle. That's a big thing, isn't it? Yeah. That's the goal of life, really, isn't it? <laughs> you have a bicycle that never breaks. Ah, amazing. Yeah. What a result you obtain. And that's what you worked so hard for. Ah, ah, I'm impressed. You should write a book about it. <laughs> so just see, you know, just see. Um, fatty. Petty, petty goals, small time, small time goals. Like that, we are playing around with little things, like children, making little things so important. Uh, but the real thing, Krishna. Therefore, yes, more time for Krishna. Can we make more time for Krishna? Uh, yeah, well, uh, maybe I have to work less. Uh, yes. When I was temple president in Vrindavan, that's a long time ago, uh, my life was extremely busy, extremely busy because it's a large project and uh, so much going on. So all the time, just like no time, uh, no time. And one thing, Prabhupada had made a rule that the temple president should sign every check. There was no internet banking, it was all by check. He should sign on every check. There's a lot of checks going out, I tell you, every day out of the, in that project. So I had to sign all day, all day, sign checks. <sighs> sign, 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 sign. Sometimes I was in the shower and people would knock on the door. Please, please, <laughs> quick, 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 can you sign this check? No, I can't. My hand is wet. <laughs> we have a towel. <laughs> Some days, you know, when you're TP of Vrindavan, there, there are some perks, and one of them is in, is in every position. In Vrindavan, it is that Govardhan is very close, so some days you say, forget it, today I'm doing a Govardhan Parikrama. So then on Govardhan Parikrama, then I'm sort of halfway around Govardhan, and one devotee comes up, excuse me, excuse me, can you sign this check? <laughs> trying to catch it the whole week. <laughs> Too much, really. Too much. So, some days I thought, today I will just go for a walk into the fields. Nobody will find me. So I went into the fields. And I come into this field and there is uh, some grain on the field. And one man, he says to, to me, he says, uh, You see this grain? There's one man in the field. He says, You see this grain? Yes, yes. He said, it's very good. It's 
very good. I said, yeah, it looks good. He says, yes, it's my grey. Mine. Very good. I said, yes, it's very good. I thought, the man is a little childish, you know, something like a child, you know. You see my bicycle, and then sort of, then you say, oh, yes, yes, very nice. So I started to sort of respond to him like a child. He says, yes, you know, this is my field, it's a very good field. I said, oh, really? Very good? <laughs> yes. He says, I come here every day. I said, really? Every day? Like I would say to a child. He said, yes, I come here every day for one hour. Okay, really? You come here every day for one hour? He said, yes. And then I go home and then I do puja. And I thought, he's not so childish. He works one hour a day and then he goes home <laughs> and then he does puja. He's better off than me, with signing all these checks. <laughs> Why? Of course I'm going for Krishna, but... Because he probably lives in a real small hut, with his seven children, and when he does puja, the whole family does puja, that takes care of educating the kids as well. In that way, his simple life is all centered around Krishna. And he's not wasting time, for, his, for making a complicated arrangement. Oh, no, I really think we need a new car. I really think so. Everybody's got a new car. Oh, well, yeah. then we also need a new car. No, if everybody's got it, then, then we need it. That's logical. <laughs> Very logical. And we, what are we working for? What are we working for? To pay the pay. Credit card, credit card, credit card, take, 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 buy, buy, credit card, credit card, credit card, credit card, no problem. Have a second credit card, three credit cards, yes, yes, yes. Book a tour booked up to the next. You can still buy with a third one credit card with money you don't have and then become a slave of the bank and for so many years to come. That's what you see. Here we are in Australia. And what drives on the road is 89% owned by the bank. A life owned by the bank. Houses owned by the bank. Uh, and who says there is no slavery in this modern society? <laughs> who says? Uh, who says in the Middle Ages people sold their soul to the devil? Oh yes, they did. And who says that these days they don't sell the soul to the devil? And what does the devil look like? Like the bank. <laughs> in this way, uh, in this way, what are we doing? So, therefore, Maharaj Pariksit is recognized as intelligent because Maharaj Pariksit was the emperor of the world who had better, everything better than we could ever dream. And he was young as well. Uh, and, and many of us can't say that. Uh, and then, yes, he gave it all up. Uh, he had to die within seven days. He could have had a party for seven days. See? Yeah. You gotta die within seven days, all right. You know, let's have the party of the world, right? Let's go out with a bang. But not Lawrence Briggs it. He was intelligent. He immediately left his kingdom. He didn't even waste a second to eat. He said, no time to waste. I'm not going to spend my time stuffing my face. I'm simply going to spend my time hearing spiritual nourishment is all I want. So that is, is basically the theme of this chapter. And today's verse is the introduction to that. Uh, you can see the translation on the board and you see the word intelligent uh, and manisinam, uh, intelligent man. So that is, is the central theme, uh, put a red circle around that. Those who are intelligent. Those who are intelligent are not great thinkers, just that. Those who are intelligent, they act in an intelligent way. Intelligence is measured like that. How we act, not only 
what we, what we say, what we think, but how we act. That's the bottom line. We're intelligent just measured. A less intelligent person may have a lot of knowledge and then not act upon it. You see. We know better and still we don't do it. We know everything. Huh? Yes, yes, yes. We know everything. Don't tell us anything. We know everything. <laughs> Yes, you know everything, and what you're doing, nothing. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yes. so, okay, between nothing and everything is at least something. So let's start to do something for Krishna and build it up. Next to our Bombay temple, next to the guest house, uh, they have this. Uh, this uh, this bodybuilding place, you know, and I, when I'm staying in the guest house, I can just look over the wall and it's in the morning when I'm chanting japa, I see all these guys like <laughs> lifting big weights, pulling weights, you know, and some have muscles like the trunks of elephants, and huge monsters of guy, and then the brother also some skinny ones, right, huffing and puffing and trying to be weightlifted. <laughs> going to take a while. So in the same way, uh, in our service, most of us are still skin, pretty skinny when it comes to bhakti. Uh, we need to build up some more muscle. Or to tell you a Gujarati story, there was a, a father who once asked his Gujarati daughter if she could carry a calf up the staircase. And she said yes, she could do it. And she carried that calf up the staircase on her shoulders. Little girl carrying a calf. Village girl, obvious. Then the father said, now do it every day. And one year later, she was carrying a bull up the staircase. <laughs> and that is the principle. So by practice, by building it up, uh, we have to build our spiritual life. Then we will do it. Then we will do it. So in between nothing and everything, there is building up a spiritual life by investing in the motion service. Then we will be intelligent by knowledge, for instance. Any questions? Any comments? So that's the transformation, like you black. Yeah. 
else. That, of course, is an arrangement of the Supreme Lord to expand himself like that. Um, but um, Advaita Acharya, Maham Vishnu, and Sadashi. Therefore, Advaita Acharya has a special concern with the living beings. Um, because Sada Shiva is, is basically impregnating living beings into the material world. So therefore, the mood of Advaita Acharya is very much one of concern for the living beings. He's, he really wants to do something for the living beings. Um, after all, he put them, he, he is directly responsible for putting them there. So he also makes an arrangement to take them out and have a worship. But he doesn't, doesn't want to just give them liberation, because that he can do himself. Is Vishnu, he can give them liberation, but he doesn't want to. Therefore, we see that Lord Mahavishnu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is worshipping the Supreme Personality of Godhead in the form of the Shamagram Shila, with Tulsi Jal and with, with, with Ganga Jal and Tulsi leaves. Why? To make the Supreme Personality of Godhead appear. Isn't that a little complicated? The Supreme Personality of Godhead worships the Supreme Personality of Godhead to make the Supreme Personality of Godhead appear. Is that your theology? <laughs> Pretty far out. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, no. Why? Uh, because he can give liberation as Lord Vishnu. That Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva cannot do. Second offense in that in the chanting of the holy names, you consider the names of the demigods like Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma to be equal independent of the name of Lord Vishnu. Jumbo, um, where was I? Um, yes. What does it mean? It means that Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma cannot give liberation from birth and death. They can never do that. Lord Vishnu can, Lord Mahavishnu can, no problem. He can give that. He can do that. Establish principles of religion, annihilate a few demons. That Lord Vishnu can do. But what he cannot do is he cannot give Krishna a brain of Golok. That only Krishna can give himself. Therefore, Advaita Acharya worshipped. And why did he worship? Because he read in the Gotamiya Tantra. There he read that if you worship Shalagram Shiva with, with just a leaf and some water, he said, then I become so indebted, I become so indebted, I have nothing to give. I have nothing I can give in return. Therefore, all I can do is give myself. And when Advaita Acharya read that, he was thinking to himself, Eureka, Eureka, Eureka. <laughs> I have found it, I have found it, I have found it. And he started this puja, not with the idea of worship. I don't call it worship. It was a conspiracy. <laughs> he wanted to force the Lord to appear, force him to appear. He knew, now you can't escape me anymore. I've got you. <laughs> and that moved at Vajrachari, worship. Yesterday I have heard from someone that when you were residing in Vrindavan, you have been hit by a bullet. Hit by a bullet. Can you elaborate on that incident? Can I elaborate on that <laughs> When I resided in Vrindavan, <laughs> I was hit by a bullet. <laughs> Can I elaborate on that? Just before, just before breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Last question. It's, it's very inconsiderate of you. Which aspect in particular would you like to The spaghetti effects or any other? Like, what was the scene about the uh, <laughs> The scene was actually that Lord Krishna 
who I thought was far away, was all alone with me. And Lord Krishna was looking into my heart. And what he saw, he didn't like it. He thought, some work needs to be done. So Lord Krishna took advantage of the, uh, of the conditioned nature of some who were touched a little bit by envy. And he manipulated their minds in such a way that they decided to have a conspiracy. And they just planned it well and tricky and in different ways. Got me into a bathroom at a certain point in time. And the lights went out like they always do in India. But this time there was a man on the switch, just see. And then suddenly from over the wall, of the bathroom next to mine, a big bang. It was the big bang, actually, that happened right there. And yes, uh, then in this way, Krishna purified me um, and made arrangements for, uh, for me to, uh, to be out of action for a while so that I could think about what I had done with my life up to that point. And since that time, I have tried to make some changes in my otherwise stubborn nature, stubborn conditioned nature. That's the real story. And now you know everything. <laughs> it was Krishna who was behind it all. Others caused this. He was so kind. He gave me some special attention. Just <laughs> You're fully satisfied now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Why the people's got it? Now we want to know why the people's got it. Um, because now I have to say the truth. <laughs> um, because I'm sitting on the asses and that's a heavy, heavy question. In front of the deities, if you ask the sun to spot light on me, it's on the camera. Why the people <laughs> of me? Because I was in. Animal sacrifices were performed in the Vedic culture, not only for the demigods. Um, so the idea was that uh, in previous ages, brahmas were very qualified. So then animals could be sacrificed. There were astrolabers, there were kavalambas, there were cows were even sacrificed. But they were revived at the same time. Yeah, the powerful Brahmins. In some lower sacrifices, um, flesh, animals could be offered, like a goat, um, and then, uh, but no, no cows, no, no higher animals. But then a goat could be offered on the full moon, but they then, or on the dark moon night, but then again one had to chant this mantra in the ear of the goat, 
and say to the God, this life, I take your life, next life you take mine. That mantra I want you to say. So there were such lower sacrifices in the, in the Vedic literature, because when Vyasadeva wrote the Vedas, he basically gave uh, a next step for everyone, according to their consciousness. So for those who were in lower states of consciousness, he gave lower sacrifices. Uh, and in this way, the Vedic culture is meant to give everyone an opportunity to connect, no matter how elevated or fallen they are, and, and then some sort of sacrifice. So there was regulated meat eating to sacrifice for those who were of a lower nature. And then one could become purified over many lives. But the Sakratan movement of Lord Chaitanya is something totally different. It's all about one life. It's about this life. Going back to Godhead. It is about, it is the Nivriti monk. I told you at the beginning of the lecture, Pravritima, Nivritima. Pravritima, the path of material improvement through sacrifices, through lower sacrifices, we try to get a higher destination in the material world. But the Nivritima is worship of the Supreme Lord, Vishnu or Krishna. And that is the end of material existence. So these two paths are there in the Vedas. So, so these kind of sacrifices, you find many sacrifices part of the lower path of the Vedas. And we are not interested in it. <coughs> Bhagavad Gita says, in Bhagavad Gita Krishna says, Traigunya Visya Veda is Traigunya Bhavarajuna. He says there are many Vedic sacrifices that are Traigunya. They are within the three gunas, within the three modes of material nature. That means they bind you up. They don't free you from being bound to samsara. So what's the use of any sacrifice if you remain bound to samsara. So those who, who sacrifice some animals in some rituals, they, they remain caught up in samsara. What's the benefit of that? So it's a lower path. But you even find such descriptions in the Manu Samhita. You read the Manu Samhita, the Dhamma Shastra, and it's very interesting. It describes Brahmanas who who are very strict. They have to fast before reading the Vedas. They fast. And if a sudra comes by, and if they see a sudra before reading the Vedas, they have to fast again. Nowadays you could never get to reading the Vedas. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. But, so these Brahmanas were very, very strict. And then, the, then the, you see instructions for for regulating meat eating and sacrifice. These same Brahmanas. Do not get caught up with all these rituals and sacrifices. Go to the essential ritual, the Nivriti Mark. End your material life. Surrender. Sarva Dharma Parityama Mekam Saranam Raja. Abandon all varieties of Dharma, of religion. Abandon it. Just surrender up to me, Krishna said. That's it, the conclusion of the Gita. Abandon all the ritual. Surrender unto me. Now only service to Krishna. That is the highest path in the Vedas. That's what's being discussed here in this verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. That's the topic of the day. Mm -hmm. Now lots of hands go. Are you ready? To the what? The wall. The wall? The wall? The wall, the wall covered with blood. Yeah. Um, Krishna says that by the way, every activity is covered by some kind of fault. Yeah. Um, um, and you know, we, we're wearing cotton clothes, uh, you know, we're also, you know, that we're wearing wool and we're taking, oh my God. we're driving from the cars. Oh my God. So, is, but we're not, but we shouldn't eat meat. You know, we're not, there are certain, there are restrictions. Yes. So, you know, where, where do we draw the line, especially when, when yes. you know, the, there's a controversy about whether we should take milk from mm. the, from the, from the... Whether we should become vegan or something. Yeah, you know, so, mm -hmm. um, and you know, I've heard 
even on occasion where Prabhupada said that uh, you know devotees can wear leather shoes if they're if they're working on the farm and they need something that's to, you know to protect them. Even even you know there are leather implements used for harnesses and all of that kind of thing in, in say in farming. So you know there are. <coughs> Where do we draw the line in terms of... Yeah. Um, Even the letter from the Madankas, we hope that it's Ahimsa letter. Yeah. We hope so. And how are you going to make a Madanka? Well, we've got plastic Madankas. Yeah, not quite the same. same. Um, yes, it's a can of worms. I mean, the topic, you know, it's a, it's a, sen it's a sensitive topic. It's complex, where to draw the line. Um, I'll draw a few lines through a huge field, you know, sort of, to give an idea. Um, one is, is that I spoke about the householders who were in the Vedic culture, um, performing all these sacrifices to counteract these sinful reactions. And, but devotees are dedicating their lives in service and therefore do not need to perform any separate sacrifice to counteract such reactions. They are saved from such reactions. So any, any reaction uh, sticking to the wool in your chala, don't worry about it as long as you chant Hare Krishna in that chala. <laughs> yeah. But if you don't chant Hare Krishna in your chala, then you know what that chala is going to do for you. So, that's, that's one principle. Uh, um, and then, yeah, so that basically gets summarized. When we are, whatever is used in the, in the service of the Sankratan movement is purified from such kind of reactions and one doesn't need to perform any uh, separate uh, purification or something. But, you can't use that to whitewash every every sinful thing in the book, right? And say, okay, we take, yeah, you know, we take drug money, we take this, we take that, we take everything, you know, we know that the guy walked the bank, and anyway, you know, bring us the cash to the temple, right, and we'll purify it for Krishna. Um, no, it is also said one should not take money coming from a sinful source. And, but because there's an, practically everything comes from a sinful source, we can't be too fanatic about it either. But we are not, uh, uh, when money comes from crime, we, we are not uh, eager to accept it. Um, we may say no to a drug dealer. We may say no, no, we don't want that donation. It's okay. You, you, you try and make your money in another way. Um, that would be a good instrument. So there are some fine lines. <coughs> um, but everything gets purified when we use it in Krishna service. Um, and what else about that vegan thing for a while? Let's just get on that for a moment. Um, more and more devotees are becoming vegan because uh, they say because the milk is not pure, uh, so much cruelty is involved now. So, yeah, but Srila Prabhupada was not fanatic about this. Sri Prabhupada felt that milk was very important, that we needed it for finer brain tissues, even in America, where the milk was adulterated with vitamin D, which might be from not that vegetarian source. Prabhupada said, don't worry about it, just take it. That we need to take milk. So Prabhupada sometimes seemed to be quite pragmatic in these matters. Uh, now what, yes, they say, but now it's worse than ever, and you know, now we do better to become vegans. Well, I respect these devotees, but personally I feel that even if a cow is kept in, in, in a hellish condition and being mistreated, it's a bad thing. It is bad. And I've seen here in Australia um, many cows waiting to be put on, on, the, on the train, calves, all in a pen, you know, like locked up and, and, and something in me felt like I was chanting Japa early in the morning, there was nobody around, just these calves, and so it felt an urge to let them escape. But there was nowhere for them to go to. So I felt of letting them out. 
nowhere to go, nowhere to go. And the whole planet is a prison for them. There's not a free, free inch of space for them. Wherever they go, they're caught. So, hellish, hellish, absolutely. But at least if we take their milk and offer it to Krishna, they make eternal benefit. Although the suffering they go through is hellish, it's temporary. And if we don't take their milk, we may bring some relief to that. We may tie a few drops of relief to the temporary suffering. We don't take the milk, okay? If everyone becomes vegan, and like millions and millions of people in the world don't drink milk, then the milk industry will feel it, and the milk consumption will go down, and less cows will have to suffer for all this, and that reduces the temporary suffering of the cows. Yay, we got some temporary benefit for the suffering of those cows. But what if we take the milk and offer it to Krishna? We give those same cows eternal benefit that cannot be destroyed by anything. Let's let devotees take all the milk as much as possible and offer it all to Krishna. And in this way, give the cows as much material benefit as all. And the rest of the world should become vegans. <laughs> <laughs> seem justified in the name of Sankatan. Right? You know, in the name of Sankatan you can do any damn thing. I, I wouldn't think so. Right? I think in the name, even the Sankatan devotees should be careful and should avoid unnecessary suffering to other living beings. We should be strict about what we eat. We should read the e-numbers and if they're the wrong ones, we should not eat them. So we go, yeah. I'm not so sure if she would be right. Yes, and my doubts about it. Yeah. Maharaj, when we talk about the Vedas, the translation that we say, the meaning of the word Veda is knowledge, right? The meaning of the Veda is so what? Knowledge. Knowledge. Is that correct? And, oh. and uh, so if that is so, why do we confine <coughs> when confine Vedas to what was written millions, thousands of years ago? Why not what you are saying, what you are writing? That's considered Veda. Why is not Bible considered part of Veda? Why is not any yeah. scripture considered part of Veda? Veda is not only um, Veda means pure knowledge that emanates from the breath of the Supreme Lord and that is not touched by any material imperfection. That's Veda. And anything else is a perverted reflection of the Veda. So all the knowledge that we have now is all perverted reflection of the Veda. Some is pretty perverted, quite perverted. You understand what I need to say? But all knowledge has its origin in real knowledge of the Supreme Lord. But it's all twisted now. Twisted. Too many black cats. <laughs> you see. No, my question was like, for example, why is that? Because in one of the classes we're talking about. Say the question in three words. Yeah. Three words. Why is Bible not considered a Veda? For Be example, because it's perverted reflection of the Veda because it's not emanating from the breath of the Supreme Lord. Only that which emanates from the breath of the Supreme Lord and then which is remembered by the Supreme Lord, there is the, uh, the that's the fifth Veda, yeah? the, that is bona fide. And if it comes unaltered in Parampara, then that's the, the Bible is temporary knowledge which is revealed to people under temporary circumstances to uplift them. 
and also the Quran. That is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to this discussion with the Chantakasi. These are temporary scriptures for temporary conditions of life. But coming from? Yeah, from God. From God. Revelations, revelations. You said it's coming from the, the source, if the source is... No. If it's the source, what are, what are the, it's not the source, it's a person. He's not a source. He's God. He has intentions. So what are his intentions? That you're looking at. You don't look at a source as an impersonal concept. You see, that's impersonalism that comes from the source. There's no source. It comes from Krishna. In Krishna, he decides what he wants to give. So, you know, you, there's certain things when you have to explain it to, to six-year-old children, you have to simplify it. Yeah? You give a simplified explanation to six-year-olds. And then later, when they're adult, you give them the elaborate explanation. Like that. So when people behave like spiritually like, like six-year-olds, we have to give them a simplified spiritual life. And then we give them Bible and Quran. But if you're mature and ready for mature spiritual life, as it is, we give you the Bhagavad Gita. Believe. Simple. Believe it or not. <laughs> it's time to end. Thank you so much. Yeah.